For many photographers, the print is the preferred method for sharing a photographic image. And Lightroom makes it quite easy to print images in a variety of ways, from contact sheets through individual fine art prints. Let's take a look at how it's done. I've already identified some images that I'd like to consider for printing, so I'll go ahead and switch to the print module. I'll then turn on the filter so that I can see only my images with a three star or more star rating. And then I can consider how I want to print out my photos. There are a variety of templates over on the left panel, so I can choose whether I want, for example, a contact sheet that will print multiple images. Obviously, I've filtered my images so that those on the film strip are the images that I want to print, but at the moment, you see there's only one image on the contact sheet, and that's because I have the option on the toolbar set to selected photos. In this case, I want to work then with all film strip photos so that every image on the film strip will be printed. In the case of individual prints, that might not be the case. For example, in this case, let's make an 8x10 print of one of the images, but here I don't want to print all film strip photos. You can see that I have 11 pages to choose from here, but rather I only want to print the selected image. So I'll change that option back to selected photos, and now you can see that I'm only printing one image. That's the image I selected on the film strip. I can then specify the particular output settings. I can start, of course, with page setup. In this case, I've designated an 8 by 10 image, and so, of course, I probably want an 8.5 by 11 inch sheet of paper. That would be a letter size sheet. I can set that under page setup. I'll go ahead and click OK since that page size is already set as I need it. And then I can take a look at the right panel. I have single image selected. I could also create a picture package if I were printing a single image multiple times on the page, or I could create a custom package if I wanted to create a page layout with multiple images arranged on the page. Under image settings, I can specify whether I want to zoom to fill. In this case, I do not want to zoom to fill. I want to have the entire image fit within the available space. So that means the image area itself won't be exactly 8 by 10 inches. In this case, it'll be 10 inches tall by a little less than 8 inches wide. I also leave the Rotate to Fit option turned on. In this case, of course, it's a non-issue because I'm working with a vertical photo, but if I had selected a horizontal photo, that would certainly be a potential issue. Then I need to decide, is it important that the image be oriented properly on the page or that it fill the maximum available space? In most cases, I would say you want to leave the Rotate to Fit option turned on. If we're working with multiple images, we can also specify that we want to repeat one photo per page. That would most often be done when we're working with a picture package, so in this case I'll leave that option turned off. We can also add a stroke if we want to. I don't need to have a small border around the image here, I don't think, so I'll leave that option turned off. The layout in this case is pretty straightforward. I have a quarter inch margin all the way around except for the bottom where I have a little bit of additional space to allow for the fact that the printer usually can't print as close to the bottom of the page. The page grid is very simple. It's just one row and one column since I'm just working on a single image. If I were working with multiple images, I could adjust the spacing between those cells. And of course, I can also adjust the cell size. You'll see that the size here matches the dimensions of the template that I chose, that 8 by 10 inch dimension. And so I don't need to make an adjustment here, but obviously I could if I wanted to. I'll scroll down a little bit, and we can choose which guides are visible. I can turn all of them off, or I can turn them back on, and then I can specify individually which particular guides I want to be able to see. I generally like having the guides turned on, but of course from time to time you might want to turn them off so that you can get a better sense of what that final print will look like. We can also add additional details onto the page. We can have a background color if we'd like. We can add an identity plate in order to provide branding, for example, on the print. I can add a watermark to my print. I can place page numbers onto the page or additional information on that page. And I can also add photo info, for example, the file name. That's obviously most useful for things like a contact sheet, so here I'll leave that option turned off. I can then scroll down to the print job section, and here I can determine whether I want to print to the printer or to a JPEG file so that I can email, for example, a contact sheet to a client. I'll turn off draft mode printing. I want to produce a nice high quality image. I'll set my print resolution to 360 pixels per inch since that's what my printer does. 
I'll set my print sharpening to low and media type to glossy. Obviously, I could change this based on the type of paper and the degree of sharpening that I would like for the image. For color management, you would either choose other and then designate a specific output profile, in which case you'd want to make sure that in the printer driver, you tell it to not modify the appearance of the image, or you can set the option to managed by printer and then let the printer do all the work in terms of color matching. The best option depends on your particular printer and the software that you're using with that printer for producing your output. In most cases, I would use a custom profile tailored to your specific printer, paper, and ink combination. We can then specify perceptual versus relative. Generally speaking, when working with a custom printer profile, I will use the relative intent, but you might want to test with both to see which produces the best results. If you're not producing a great print, you can also turn on the print adjustment option and then fine tune the brightness and contrast for the print. Ideally though, these options won't be necessary. And in most cases, if you're using good printer profiles, I think you'll find that they're not necessary. Finally, we could click the print button. We can then choose the properties button and fine tune the settings that are specific to your particular printer for the print job and then click OK and the image or images will be sent to the printer.